Cyberpunk continues to get better with every patch, from the bug fixes, the added performance and ray tracing modes on PS5 and Series X, the input lag improvements in patch 1.6, and even Series S getting a 60fps performance mode, from every angle the game continues to be chiseled into better shape. Developer CDPR goes another step further today though with the launch of patch 1.61. Yes, it may be just a decimal point, and we don't usually expect much from these smaller updates. And to be fair, most of patch 1.61's patch notes relate to bug fixes. And yet, as always, the best is left right until the end. A note that FSR 2.1, AMD's Fidelity Super Resolution AI upscaling technique, is now added to PC. And better still, FSR 2.1 is also now included on newer generation consoles like PlayStation 5, Series X and S. So, what does it mean for Cyberpunk on console? How radically does FSR 2.1 actually improve image quality over CDPR's previous temporal AA method as used on patch 1.6? What are the benefits and are there any drawbacks visually? And lastly, does FSR 2.1 improve the performance of the game on PS5 or Series consoles? Let's find out. For a detailed explanation of FSR and how it compares to other upscaling techniques, be sure to check out Alex Battaglia's excellent God of War video comparison. In short though, FSR, or Fidelity Super Resolution, is a smart upscaling technique designed by AMD, rivaling Nvidia's equivalent DLSS. Firstly, it allows developers to achieve better image quality when scaling a low resolution, like 1080p, up to 4K for example. The idea being it attempts to recreate a 4K pixel structure using data from current and previous frames. And secondly, in doing so, FSR also potentially allows for better frame rates by letting developers natively render at a low resolution and then lean on FSR to improve it thereafter. It means Cyberpunk on PS5, Series X and S presents with a high quality image. I've gone in pretty hard this time with 2x and even 4x zooms to really outline the difference, but even in full view, no zooming, the addition of FSR 2.1 has a genuine impact on the game's visuals. First up, a word on resolutions as always. With the move to FSR, there's an opportunity, as I've mentioned, to adjust the native resolution on every console, potentially to lower it. But based on new pixel tests for PS5, Series X and S, well, the targets are just the same as before. That's point number one. So for example, take the Series S version. Series S still aims to render natively at 1440p in its quality mode, Interestingly, it does appear the absolute lowest bounds of its DRS range is more extreme now in using FSR, with it adjusting down to 1080p, lower than our previous reading of 1296p. But really, the typical rendering resolution in between these points is similar. And likewise, Series S's performance mode targets 1080p once again as the maximum possible figure. Again though, interestingly, at its lowest point in GPU taxing areas, Series S's performance mode drops closer to 1344x756, which again is lower than the 800p we recorded before the patch. As for PS5 and Series X, they each continue to run at a constant native 1440p on their ray tracing modes, as before. FSR then reconstructs that to appear like a 4K image in static moments, and in their performance modes, the resolution is again more flexible. The key to patch 1.61's boost to image quality isn't in the pixel counts then, but instead it's what FSR 2.1 actually does with each frame on PS5 or Series X or S. So in comparison, there are multiple pros and cons to FSR 2.1 being used today. And I will stress this isn't a toggle or an option or anything like that in the menus, it's fixed in place as of patch 1.61, replacing the older default temporal anti-aliasing method CDPR used. The good news then, that's not an issue. In just about every case, FSR 2.1 does actually improve the image, whether it's in static shots, in movement, 
in dealing with aliasing or with instances of disocclusion, meaning objects in the foreground obscuring background detail, it's all improved. So let's start with point one, static scenes. I'm using PS5 as an example in its 30 FPS ray tracing mode here. And actually one thing to note is the improvement FSR brings for this 30 FPS RT mode is much more appreciable than the 60 FPS performance mode. Most likely this is owing to FSR being better equipped for reconstructing an image from fewer frames, in this case 30, than CDPR's usual technique. Either way, the difference is pretty stark. Here's the older patch 1.6 on left using the standard TAA against the new patch 1.61 with FSR on right. All post effects like chromatic aberration, depth of field, motion blur and film grain are switched off on both sides just to better dial into the improvement. And right away, you'll notice the entire image is much sharper and clearer. Zooming in by four times, you really get a sense of what FSR does to each frame. So just look at this shot of the bright outback area. There's lots of fine sub-pixel elements here on the car detailing, the trees, the trailers, the fences, and all round on patch 1.61, a lot of the background detail is much better defined, sharpened with FSR engaged. This is one of my favorite shots to show off the improvement. Notice how the signs on shops from this distance are much more legible. Again, most of this should be clear in full screen view. Now, FSR 2.1 is really at its best in busy, bright areas with lots of high frequency detail, but it's not all about enhancing detail. FSR's other strength is in logically recognizing the elements of the screen that need to be dialed down. So for example, elements with say, visual noise, flicker need to be addressed, and FSR does it more effectively overall than what came before. Which brings us to point number two. You'll see aliasing is diminished all round, if not entirely removed. One pretty good example here is on car metals, where the jagged stair-stepping patterns are less pronounced. You'll also spot the dithering on reflections across the roof is cleared up and smoothed over. Now the one outside case is this barbed wire fence, and obviously this still struggles to resolve properly even on FSR 2.1. There's still this unsightly visual artifact flickering all across the fence. Arguably, it's more visible and aggressive on FSR 2.1 now, but on balance, it's the only example where FSR falls short. Switching to Series X for a few more comparisons with the same setup between patch 1.6 and 1.61, we're now going to add a bit of motion. In particular, we're looking at a huge upgrade to the treatment of fine elements like hair. With FSR 2.1 engaged, there's more of what we'd call temporal stability. As the hair strands sway, as they overlap with each other, FSR resolves that detail more intelligently. It's not perfect, obviously. There's still a degree of visual noise as we spin this character on the spot, but the processing FSR brings to these finer sub-pixel details helps reduce that distraction. All round, I've got to say it's really impressive how well it isolates one detail over another, or in other words, the elements we want to see enhanced versus the artifacts we want to see dulled down. Now, there are limits to FSR. In general, it's an improvement, definitely, but image breakup is still a big issue here, just as with the previous TAA method. In cases with disocclusion, like this character's hand waving right in front of her hair, see how there's a kind of fizzle effect as the detail reconstructs. Even momentarily, it's similar to the artifact we had before the patch on 1.6. And here's another example. See how plant detail deteriorates behind for a few frames in the background as this girl animates in the foreground. Again, the FSR image does look better once it settles, once the background is visible. It's just that it needs a few frames, a bit of time to reconstruct those pixels, and that becomes a distraction. It was a problem in patch 1.6, and yes, it remains a problem even with FSR 2.1 in place today. That being said, FSR does at least improve one particular issue with ghosting in the older TAA method. Or in other words, the obvious banding trails left behind moving objects is reduced now. 
So check out this shot of the guitarist's hands as he strums up and down. See how that dark ghosting pattern behind his hand is simply less apparent with FSR in place. The final test here takes us to rapid motion. I really wondered how FSR would hold up here given it thrives with static shots or at least minor levels of movement. But yet again, impressively, FSR manages to boost overall clarity as we walk or even drive quickly forward. In direct forward movement, there's just no problem. FSR still produces a sharper image, even if the aliasing treatment doesn't quite hold up as well in motion on the car here. However, there is a catch. If we pan our camera to the side, we're prone to some more image breakup. Really, it's to be expected given how FSR works. And, well, during a panning shot from left to right, FSR is constantly being fed new visual data from the screen's edges, which means most of the data within the frame will be different to the last. The result? Well, a freeze frame here shows us the raw, unfiltered base image. And, simply put, FSR 2.1 doesn't work well here. It does look similar in spots to the result before the patch, though typically motion blur will help to hide it. Even with its limits, Cyberpunk is better with FSR 2.1 than without, no question. Better image treatment, sharpened details, it's mostly on the plus column. Again, what we've seen so far is the 30fps ray trace mode on PS5 and Series X, and switching to the performance mode, you get a decent improvement there too. The impact isn't always as stark, though again we see a boost to the legibility of distant detail. And in motion, there's a doubling of frame data to work with, which obviously helps those panning shots. A brief note on Series S as well, which receives the same FSR 2.1 improvements, though working at a much lower base resolution. So in performance mode, for example, it's running from 756p to 1080p, which is far fewer pixels to work with than Series X, for example, though still enough for FSR to provide a decent boost to clarity. Check out the bottles behind the bar, the detail into the chain around this character's neck. It's clearer all round on Series S, even if the issues with disocclusion are still obvious. Frame rate performance bears some mention. We're used to seeing a trade off between visuals and frame rate, and so the question is with all of FSR's improvements, is there a drawback to how PS5 or Series X or S play? Or even on the flip side, an improvement? So I've put some legwork in here. I'll say that up front PS5 and Series X dropped most obviously in crowded areas, the market, for example, with this likely being a CPU bottleneck that'll go unaffected by FSR. And taking PS5 as an example on its own, in its 60fps performance mode, that still largely holds true. In side by sides with our last tested patch, update 1.5, there's a difference, though not really a consistent one. So by that I mean patch 1.61 sometimes pushes ahead, and sometimes falls behind, and sometimes they're just neck and neck. Later shootouts do show the new patch dropping more often, in fact, into the 50fps region, but then this might just be incidental given gameplay is impossible to sync all the way. In general, PS5 and by extension Series X tend to give a similar reading on patch 1.61 to how it appeared before. Drops to 50 FPS and under are possible just as before. And I suppose the bottom line here is FSR doesn't help to clear the gap to a rock solid 60 FPS. A quick word on Series S2, again focusing on the performance modes since the 30fps modes tended to be really robust in previous patches. Here we see the before and after on Series S with the FSR patch applied in spots where GPU bottlenecks were more of a factor. Early scenes with the mirror, for example, has patch 1.61 actually boosting performance. Call it a gain of 3 to 4 fps at a push, there's a consistent uptick with patch 1.61. Now, we can't credit FSR with this alone. It may also be down to the change in how its dynamic resolution works, where if the game's rendering at a lower resolution now, it makes sense Series S claws back some performance. Still, it's not a radical difference all round, and certainly, later scenes don't make the advantage so obvious.
Overall, FSR 2.1 is a net win for all the newer consoles here, and something that distinguishes PS5, Series X and S from the last gen versions, which don't receive this technique at all. It intelligently picks out the details we want to see enhanced, the shop signs, the blades of grass, trees, while also addressing the issues the image has, like the ghosting on movement, the flickering on hair and more. There's more stability, fewer distractions and a greater push for detail at range. The only downside is that not all elements are perfectly treated, image breakup is still a problem and in fact on Series S specifically, there's moments where the image momentarily breaks up during basic forward movement. Cyberpunk has come a long way since its launch though. Every new patch, even incremental ones like 1.61, seem to make an impact and shows CDPR is far from done with the project. But that's all from me today. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get in touch with myself or the rest of the team, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.